in this next set of problems, I want you to look carefully at each of the examples. 2y equals 4 plus 8x, y minus 3 equals 2x plus 1, etc. What's different about these problems versus the ones we just solved? Well, these problems all have a y and an x in them. And so notice that in the direction step, it says to isolate the y, solve for y. So in each of these problems, we're going to solve for y. And we can do it in one step in each of these, even though they look complicated. So let's start with the first one, 2y equals 4 plus 8x. The y is the part that we're isolating. I'm just going to highlight it there so you can see that all we need to do is remove the 2 from the left-hand side. It's currently 2 times y. So to remove that multiplication, I'm going to divide. So I'm going to do 2y over 2 equals 4 plus 8x, the whole quantity, over 2. That way I'm doing the operation once to each side, to the whole side. That leaves me with y on the left equals, and then I could actually write this as 4 over 2 plus 8x over 2, just splitting up the fraction into two parts. And so my final answer here would be y equals 2 plus 4x. In the second equation, y minus 3 equals 2x plus 1. I want to isolate the y, so let me just highlight that in yellow. And I currently have y minus 3, so to get rid of the minus 3, I'm going to add 3. And that would give me y minus 3 plus 3 equals 2x plus 1 plus 3. So I'm doing the plus 3 on both sides. On the left, this will simplify to y. And on the right, I have 2x plus 1 plus 3, which is just 2x plus 4. The third equation is negative y equals negative x plus 2. So again, it might help to remember that when there's not a coefficient on the variable, the real coefficient there is negative 1. So I can rewrite this as negative 1y equals negative x plus 2. To get rid of negative 1 times y, I need to divide by negative 1. This is not a case to add 1 to both sides because it's not a negative 1 plus y, it's a negative 1 times y. So we'll go ahead and do the division. That gives us negative 1y over negative 1 equals negative x plus 2, the whole thing over negative 1. Simplifying. On the left, we now just have y. And on the right, remember we can break this up. So negative x over negative 1 would be positive x. And positive 2 over negative 1 would be negative 2, giving us y equals x minus 2. If that last step felt a little fishy to you, go back and look at the first example in this row, 2y equals 4 plus 8x. We did a similar maneuver there. In the last example, negative x equals y plus 1. Remember what we're isolating for. We're isolating for the y. And so all we need to do is remove the plus 1. And we can do that by subtracting 1 on both sides. So negative x minus 1 equals y plus 1 minus 1. Again, I'm doing the exact same thing on both sides, subtracting 1. And my final result here is going to be negative x minus 1 equals y. Again, don't worry so much about the y being on the right side or the left side. The point is that we isolated it. Now, I wish all equations were that easy. Just one step and you're done. But usually there is more than one step to solve an equation. And when there is more than one step, you really want to move stuff around with addition and subtraction first because it is simply faster and less complicated that way. As soon as you start dividing, you might introduce fractions. And so you want to avoid that for as long as possible unless it's the only step you need to do. So let's look at solving 4x plus 3 equals 11. Now, there's no y in this one, so we're just going to solve for the variable, the variable being x. We need to isolate the 4x to start with. And we're going to do that by subtracting 3 from both sides. 4x plus 3 minus 3 equals 11. 
minus 3. You can see the minus 3 on both sides from the original equation. So that leaves us with 4x on the left, and 11 minus 3 gives us 8. So now we have 4x equals 8. And then to get rid of the 4 that's multiplied by x, we're going to divide by that. So we'll do 4x over 4 equals 8 over 4, which simplifies to be x over 2. So we've got a solution to this equation. In the next equation, we're going to solve for y. The equation is x plus 3y equals 6. So I'm going to start by highlighting the uh, term I need to isolate, the 3y. That's got to be by itself first. So I've got to get rid of that x. The x isn't multiplied by anything. It's just added on. So to get rid of a... Now the x is added to the 3y term. So I'm going to subtract it to get rid of it. So instead of x plus 3y, I'm going to have x minus x plus 3y equals 6 minus x. And I kind of snuck it into the middle there, but you can see that I did do the same thing. I subtracted the exact same quantity on both sides. You can put it anywhere on the left and the right as long as uh, you combine your terms correctly. x minus x makes 0, so that one is gone. Now I just have 3y equals 6 minus x. That x didn't disappear. And now to isolate the y, I need to remove the 3 from it. So I have 3y, 3 times y. I'm going to divide by 3 on both sides. So I'll have 3y over 3 equals 6 minus x over 3. The whole thing, 6 minus x over 3. And again, I can break that up into two terms. So I could say y on the left, 3 over 3 is 1, equals 6 over 3 minus x over 3. And I did that because the 6 over 3 is going to simplify. So the final answer here would be y equals 2 minus x over 3. And notice here that it's super tempting. I call these like sexy problems. Super tempting to want to go in and when you have 6 minus x over 3 to just somehow magically, you know, make this happen where you cancel the 6 and the 3 and make 2. That is not allowed here. You have to split the fraction up into two pieces. So don't be a victim of that one. Um, it's tempting, but you know, you know better. Don't do it. The final example in this row is 0.5t minus 100 equals 300. Now we have a new variable, t, but it is the only variable. So if we're going to solve this equation, we just want to isolate the t. Let's start by isolating the 0.5t, which means that we need to move the minus 100. We need to move it off that side. To alter it, to get rid of the minus 100, we're going to add 100 on both sides. So we'll have 0.5t minus 100 plus 100 equals 300 plus 100. So the thing we've done to both sides is add 100. Simplifying that, we have 0.5t equals 400. And now to get rid of that 0.5, you actually have two options here. It's 0.5 times t, so you could divide by 0.5 on both sides. Totally fine. That'll work. It'll give you t equals 800. The other thing you could notice is that to get rid of a 0.5, we could just multiply by 2. 2 times a half is 1. So I'm going to actually do the problem that way. I'm just going to multiply both sides by 2. So 2 times 0.5t equals 2 times 400. And 2 times 0.5 is 1. So now I have 1t equals 800, or just t equals 800. The same answer I would have gotten as dividing by 0.5 on both sides. Now, this might be a good time to remind you how it is you check the solution to an equation. Now, when you have two variables in the equation, it's a little bit more complicated. But if there's only one variable in the equation, we can quickly do a check of our answer. So let me just move over on the page here a little bit. And let's go back to our equation 0.5t minus 100 equals 300. I found a solution of t equals 800. So let's see if that solution is correct. We should be able to put it back into the equation and get out the same value on both sides and, and a true equation. So we'll do 0.5 times 800 
minus 100 equals 300. And that's 0.5 times 800 is 400. So now I have 400 minus 100 equals 300. And sure enough, 400 minus 100 is 300. And I have 300 equals 300, which, yep, that's a true equation that checks out. So I might make a little check mark by my solution to remind myself that I have checked that one out and it's a good one.